after we've completed our day zero configuration from the command line prompt configuration wizard, uh, I want to show you what happens uh, when running through all your configuration setup to then access the GUI interface uh, that you've configured from the console here. Um, so just to indicate we've done everything from the uh, console interface, all the config setup wizard is done through there. Uh, I've added a couple settings to allow both the in-band and out-of-band management port to be accessible uh, based on our network settings to get it um, set up for our uh, 100 network as we need to. Um, so everything is ready to roll uh, for this. And if I go over to our interface here, uh, we will go to our IP address that we've configured for this environment. Again, all done from a brand new day zero configuration from the console. And when you log into that interface, what happens is we notice we're met with a day zero wireless configuration window. Even though we've done the command line interface for the day zero configuration, it still prompts us for a GUI interface of the day zero configuration as well. Um, you'll see a lot of the settings here that um, initially weren't present in that command line. We do have accessibility here again. Uh, some things were automatically inherited uh, and some things we have to go back through and manually enable back into our system here. So I'll do this run through and see what happens. Again, hit the plus button to accept that setting. Uh, we do have our service port for out-of-band management ready to go. And it is letting us reconfigure the interface that is already configured on our console configuration design once again. Um, so we will set it up as we have done here. Proceed next. I'm not going to do any wireless network settings because, again, I want to just get inside the actual admin of the uh, controller from the GUI interface. So we're going to bypass this for now. We'll keep our settings for our RF group name as normal. Uh, we'll just make sure we do include our uh, usernames here. Again, optional. Uh, we know we've already set up the admin username already, so I will also bypass this and just hit summary and finish. So here we have the same IP address structure, the same network configuration for all these settings we've put in. And the objective here is to now not only walk through the command line interface, day zero auto wizard, to now also the web user interface, day zero auto wizard, uh, and then allow us into the actual admin of the controller here as well. So I'll go back into our uh, console interface we have on this controller, seeing that some of the interfaces were up and changed based on the credentials we have done here. Again, just to satisfy that GUI uh, to make sure we can proceed going forward. All right, so I will log back out, just hit the IP address. And we're met with the day zero wireless configuration once again. Let me just close the browser. Go back into it. It has logged us out because we have a new browser session. I will log back in. Again, those settings were set up when I did the uh, command line version of the uh, day zero setup. So that's where our admin credentials came from. And again, we're met with that day zero wireless configuration. Uh, so what we're showing is the fact that from the complete command line interface through the console, configuring it either from the 
um, set up guide and then going back through and doing some local administration to allow us into this for setting up VLANs and ports and really getting us into that uh, initial config state. When we do want to go into the GUI interface to continue doing our uh, network management from there, uh, we continue to be in this day zero wireless loop. So what we found is that if we go back into the configuration, we have to assign it manually the fact that the wireless domain is in the US. Uh, because even though we have established our country domain here, um, for some reason it's not being absorbed into the configuration and it seems to be that issue not allowing us to proceed further. So if we go into the configuration of the controller, Uh, not CapWeb AP, that was the AeroOS configuration. We'll just go into AP for the um, iOS configuration here. Uh, we will notice that if we configure within the AP, we do have a .11 uh, configuration parameters. So the only way to configure the country code, which is available here, we say AP country and we say US is where we want to make this controller configured it'll tell us that we must disable the radio networks for 2.4 and 5 before we do any assignment of the controller to its respective domain. So if I go back to AP, again, dot 11, we then have the two different radio parameters to go and configure. So I'll do 2.4 gigahertz. And now we have the ability to see things we can do from here. And what we want to take a look at is the ability to shut this radio down. So we will do just that. So we're saying the AP radio 2.4, we're going to shut it down. It'll give us a, a little warning to make sure that is what we want it to do. And we're going to say yes. Now we do have to do that for both radios. We'll do 2.4 and 5. So we'll just modify that from our arrow up to indicate that command string is there again turn off the 5 gigahertz network, we'll say yes again. And now we'll go back into doing our access point country. Again, we want to type in US for what we can do for our controller domain. And now, since we've disabled those network radios, it will say that we can now apply this command into our structure. We'll say yes, apply that to our controller, and now we've manually inform the controller that we are operating in this country for proper deployment. So I'm going to do a end. We'll make sure this is saved. I'll go back through a new tab. Back to our wireless controller. And now that we have satisfied the domain or the country that this controller is going to be responsive into, we now can see that we have bypassed the uh, day zero config loop from the GUI. And now we've gone back into proper administration of our controller uh, from the in-band management interface. And now we can get into our administration of the controller as expected.